As I mentioned before, uh, one of the new categories that we've been exploring is sports, uh, specifically boxing. Um, I don't know if any of you guys uh, are boxing fans out there. Um, I, I like to do the show of hands thing, but you know, it looks like a lot of you guys probably are right around the, the, the demo for, for boxing fans. Um, but it, it, tends to, um, it tends to skew male, and um, I think the sweet spot is somewhere between 25 and 45. Uh, most of the boxing fans that we know now grew up watching um, the boxing greats of their dad's era and have since taken on um, an interest in the greats of today's era, such as Floyd Mayweather, Manny Pacquiao, um, Ricky Hatton, uh, Joshua Kalati, and, and on and on and so forth. Um, and so we have uh, started working with uh, Golden Boy Promotions, which is Oscar De La Hoya's uh, company he's promoting now. and. Uh, one of their directives is to launch into the next generation of boxing fans and by, as Jeff explained, talking to fans as they talk to each other um, is going to have to be through these new mediums of communication, through social media um, and through, through their phones, through texting and, um, and you know, mobile devices. Uh, so uh, when Golden Boy came to us, they had a pretty traditional um, old school sort of approach uh, that worked. It got folks the information and, and their fans tuned in, but they wanted to branch out into this whole new audience. And um, two of the things that we suggested were to go onto social media platforms, where I'm sure you guys have all been hearing tons about that, but then also to branch out into mobile. Um, their, their audience comprises mostly of that demo that I, that I explained before, which is one of the largest growing demographics for the mobile community, and uh, the Hispanic community, which is another um, large part of the boxing community. So when we were hunting around for a, a mobile partner to work with, I came across Hip Cricket, uh, and they had in place some strategies that would help us to reach uh, both of those, those audiences and try something new for Golden Boy. Great, so we'll pick that up in just a second, the, the rest of the story and the results sp specifically. So here is a graph that I was referring to in terms of the average age of a texter, now moving to 38 years old. Also, uh, the points that I was making about uh, more, mo more text than mobile phones, the number of text messages. Uh, actually, 51 years old, had a little bit of a good memory here to, to remember the points. So here we are on, on, this, on this particular case, Angela. As we know, um, you know, most boxing matches now are um, sold via pay-per-view, so we don't have that immediate click-through online the way that we would if we were selling an item that can be purchased on Amazon.com or on you know, BestBuy.com or wherever it is that you're going. So we need to be able to get to the user when they're sitting in front of the TV, and, and as you know, some of the previous panelists mentioned, most people have their phones within five feet of them. I'm actually really nervous right now because both of my devices are at least 25 or 30 feet away from me, and for all I know, somebody could be texting me something important. Um, so um, what we were trying to do is find a way to get the message in their hands wherever they were, including right in front of the TV 15 minutes before the fight was about to start. Um, so the other thing we wanted to do was to start to build up a mobile database and we wanted to encourage people to be part of the VIP club because we have so many great things to offer them around this kind of event. There's, um, you know, the sponsors had plenty of things to offer uh, in, in terms of winning prizes. Um, there was an opportunity to come to the fight, to, to win a trip, flyaways, you know, things that fans would really be interested in in participating and to get closer to their favorite sport. And we were trying to find a way to get, to break through all the noise and to get to people who were really, really interested and offer them things they'd, they'd think were cool, um, you know, as a way to connect them to the sport that in the past has been so far away. So we uh, ran a campaign with, with Hip Cricket. So uh, just a little bit more background. So in 2008, Hip Cricket formed an advertising network much like the advertising networks that were referenced earlier. We really believe in the power of permission-based marketing, the ability to opt in consumers, and to give, uh, to give you a little, bit, a little bit of background about why permission-based marketing via mobile is so powerful. It is the consumer who initiates the, the conversation. The consumer will see a call to action and will respond uh, either to win a prize, to, to opt in for, a, for a, a, a mobile club, and you now are allowed to send them one additional message. If somebody were to opt in for 25% off on a sweater, you can say, would you like to receive similar information and offers from, say, Macy's. Once you have those, those folks opted in, you're, you can reach out to them 
uh, repeatedly, but not all that often, with, with messages. So in this particular case, what Angela did was tap into an opted-in population of Hispanics who had joined our network and said they wanted to receive information and offers from brands that they trust. So why did this work? Uh, a, a couple of reasons. First one is Hispanics and mobile. And let's talk specifically about that. Well, Hispanics over-index when it comes to their mobile use, not only the devices that they have, the number of devices that they have, but also the activities that, that, uh, that they conduct on mobile devices. So as you can see here, almost one-third of Hispanics are interested or highly interested in receiving mobile offers and ads. And also, uh, in the debate over text versus mobile web versus apps, 79% of Hispanics text. And then the permission-based marketing argument, or the permission-based marketing opportunity as I take a look at it. Hipcrick had commissioned a survey uh, a few months ago, and what we did is we asked people if they were willing to join a mobile loyalty club. And again, that would be the consumer raising their hand and saying, yes, I want to have an interaction with you, the brand, under my, my, gate, my gate. I can opt out whenever I want, and you're only going to give me what I'm, ask, what I'm asking for. 37% of consumers say they are open to mobile loyalty clubs. But here's the more remarkable stat when, it, uh, when I looked at this study. 83% of, of these 37% have yet to be targeted or yet to be reached by a brand that they trust. So how many times is, uh, in the room as you, have you as marketers reached a consumer who said, I want more marketing, I want more relevant marketing in my life? And that, and that is, is the opportunity here. So some of the takeaways, and we can talk more specifically about some other uh, uses of SMS. Uh, use text for reach. So it, all you need to do is travel a little bit, go in an airport, and take a look at what people are doing on their device. Th this room is not America, respectfully. I was watching the other day somebody triple tapping on a razor. Uh, the last time I did that was in, I think, 2007. It still happens on a daily basis. Uh, you, what you're able to do is build a database and have an ability to remarket to folks, again, as we talked about, but also measure advertising effectiveness. And a really quick example of that is we did a campaign for JVC in Times Square around the Batman DVD release. And what we did is we had a different keyword in Times Square than we had in other mediums. So we, we ran a Rolling Stone ad and we, we ran some media in other places with different keywords. So what we were able to do was to say in real time, looking at the Hip Cricket platform, we want to spend more money with these street team members, or we want to pull a plug on those. Again, in real time, what you're able to do is to measure uh, activity or inactivity in campaigns. Uh, we believe that you really should understand the mobile pyramid, and we are uh, way broader than SMS, but we look at SMS as being the bottom, the reach strategy that you often can build on. You might have a link in your SMS that would drive people to a richer experience. Incorporate mobile with other channels. If we can uh, give you one piece of advice is that mobile does not sit on an island. And if you ask me what has kept mobile from, from uh, advancing as, uh, as fast as it should have been advancing, it is that we have not done a good job of asking consumers to do something and making it ubiquitous. There is not a, a call to action in every newspaper ad or magazine ad or a TV ad. And what, what you're doing is you have an opportunity to make a passive activity interactive. And as more call to actions get out there, it becomes more of a ubiquitous activity for Americans. Segment uh, audience by behavior, and Richard Ting mentioned that earlier, uh, not by phone, to taking a look at specifically what people are doing on their devices. There are many, many research companies. You're going to hear from Inside Express coming up, but Comscore and Nielsen and Ground Truth. Many of these companies have, and the, and the Mobile Marketing Association, of course, have excellent uh, research papers that are, that are available. So you, what you really can do is not uh, run a campaign blindly. Uh, and again, use that third-party research uh, effectively. And, and I just did a blog piece for iMedia about the changing research. Uh, Spring's research isn't necessarily at, uh, current today. The world is moving so fast in mobile. There have been devices that have been launched since the spring. So what you really need to do is to keep on, on top of this even more than you might have thought otherwise.